All right, so we have, um, let's go and check out some of these questions that we just got. We lived off campus. Is there, uh, is there a transportation system around campus? That's a great question. So there is a transportation system that goes all around campus. It's great because the buses come every 10 minutes to the different location. They also have a really cool app that they just came out with called Blurb It, where you can um, text the number and it texts you how far away the bus stop. The bus is from your location. So if you don't want to wait outside during cold weather, you can go out and um, do that and use Blurb It. Um, also, as a UVM student, you have free access to all the city buses. So you can go anywhere in Burlington. If you want to go to the mall, you can do that. The airport, the um, Amtrak as well. Also, um, I had an internship down in Montpelier, which was about 45 minutes away with the Lieutenant Governor, and I was able to take the bus out there um, for my internship. Is there, do you have any cool stories about transportation? Well, we just got these new bikes that you can rent for free on campus, so that's really exciting. Um, I haven't tried them out yet, but they're right outside our student center. Um, and since the weather is finally warming up, um, I think uh, I'll probably use them um, just to get around or head downtown instead of walking. Um, but you can walk everywhere, and lots of students have bikes on campus. And if you don't have a bike, you can rent right now. Yeah, um, here's this other question about whether there's a hiking club at UVM. So we do have our outing club where you can actually become a trained leader in that and lead trips, or you can just go on them and they do trips all over the Northeast. So they, right now, this weekend, I'm going on a trip to, uh, to hike and camp out in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. So I'm really excited for that, but they also do ice climbing trips. They do um, sea kayaking trips, uh, just to name a few, rock climbing. So there's lots of ways to get involved. Also, if you've never tried something out, they have uh, beginner uh, trips as well, and then intermediate and advanced. So no matter what level you are, they have something that you can do with that. Um, a couple of other cool outing club types that we have is we have the Whitewater Kayaking Club. So they do a bunch of different um, trips. Uh, right now they're planning one out in Colorado. So they just got the permits to go out there, but they do ones here as well that you can take part in. So that's a really neat club. Have you ever done an outing club trip? I have not. It's on my list of things to do. Um, so hopefully next year they have some free hikes at the beginning of the year. So I'm hoping to take advantage of one of those um, once school starts again. Yeah. Let's see. What if I have more than one major? Okay, so great question, Mariko, about the advising system. What if you have more than one major? The nice thing is you do get an advisor in both colleges. So if you have a dual degree where you have a major in both the, say, two different colleges, one in business, and let's go with arts and sciences, say you're doubling with English, you can have two, um, you can have an advisor in both of those to help advise you and help you along with that process. Um, and also the nice thing is you have to meet with your advisor before you choose classes your next semester just so that they make sure that you actually or taking the classes you need to graduate and everything like that. And if you're a first year student and you have like on your list to sign up for like a 300 level, they'll be like, whoa, wait a second kid, you can't do that. Um, so that's something that they do as well. Um, and I've found that working with your advisor has just been sort of a fabulous thing. I've had two advisors throughout my time here at UVM and both of them have just been phenomenal. I'm sure I'll stay in contact with them after I graduate and everything like that. It's sort of like a lifelong friend. Yeah, I really um, I have a great relationship with my advisor. So she sent me an email. It was a very concerning email. She said I, she'd gotten like a report that one of my classes wasn't going very well, but um, I called her right away and we figured out it was a mistake um, on the professor's part. But we called her right away and the three of us sat down and talked about it. And she was like, oh, I didn't realize that it actually had affected a bunch of students. But we figured it out um, before most other people had even realized what happened. Um, but she was really eager to help me. Um, just really wanted to figure everything out um, just to make sure that I didn't stress too much about it. Um, but it's nice to know that she was always on my side and there to help me um, if I need anything. Great question. All right. All right. So this question is, can you get help with math on campus? Um, we have this great learning co-op on campus. It's right over on our athletic section of campus. And there they offer free tutoring for students. You get one hour of free tutoring for every three credits you're in. So that's about five hours of free tutoring a week that our students have available to them. So if you're really struggling with physics or calculus or math or something like that, you can get either group tutoring or individual tutoring over there. They also have supplemental sheets and supplemental homework that you can work through. So they really work with you to help make sure that um, you get the resources you need. 
And if you're really good at a subject, you can actually become a tutor over there as well and make some money doing that. Yeah. Also, professors are really eager to help you out. I took a stats course last year, um, and there was like one concept, and I just couldn't wrap my hand around it, but I went up to my professor's office um, and just spent about an hour explaining it to me. Um, it got an A on that test, um, but really she was the one who helped me out on there, and then I actually explained it to one of the other people in the class. So it was really just nice to be able to go up to her and ask a question and have her explain it a little bit more in depth um, so that I could understand something I went over in lecture. Yeah, I remember just one last thing on the math thing was, um, and for my calculus two class, my, I remember I had a teacher who st uh, stayed till ten thirty at night just to make sure that she had time to meet with me. Um, wow. She got out of work at four thirty, but she stayed that late and was working with students all throughout until then to really help make sure that we knew all the concepts and understood everything. And that always sort of stood out to me. Not being a math student, she didn't have to take the time or anything like that, but she really did, and that was great. Let's see. Oh, okay, sure. So Marika just asked a really great, great question about hands-on learning. Um, so each college does it a little bit differently. For example, the nursing students do their uh, rotations in the hospital and everything like that. Um, business students do internships. Um, a lot of the different colleges do internships. So I have a friend who was a political science uh, student, and he worked both in at the state house with uh, politicians, so he worked for a state senator. Um, but then he also worked in a legal office. Usually our students try to do at least two internships. I worked for the lieutenant governor for one internship, um, and then another one I worked at QVC, the digital co uh, TV t company. Also, uh, we have service-based learning classes where you partner up with, uh, with a company or with an organization, and you take a class while also working with that organization. So I took the Cabot Marketing Challenge where we worked on marketing plans for local businesses downtown. Um, and then while we were doing that, we were learning about how to make marketing plans and writing one at the same time. And the winners got $3,000 to actually implement their marketing plan and put it to use. So we not only developed one, but we actually got to implement it afterwards. Um, also, study abroad is a good way to get hands-on learning. If, say, you're a global studies or an international business, or um, even the College of Nursing has a public health um, one that they do in Uganda, correct? Yes. So there's lots of different ways to get hands-on learning. We sort of view that as a huge thing here at the University of Vermont. Um, even say like you were an animal science major, we have a bunch of farms where you can deliver calves or milk the cows and do all of those types of things. So there's a way to do it in every single one of the colleges. Yeah, and the College of Nursing and Health Sciences, I really have enjoyed um, the hands-on aspect. So I'm not working with patients yet, but I'm learning about all sorts of things um, in my lab on um, basically fake patients on dummies. Um, so I'm learning how to give shots and put in catheters and all sorts of fun stuff um, and not having to do it on real people, which I'm sure the patients in the hospital will appreciate that I already know what I'm doing once I actually get to the, them next year. Um, it's a really great experience. I know our athletic training department um, works with all of the uh, sports teams on campus, um, from clubs to teams to all the varsity teams. Um, so they get a lot of hands-on experience at school and then they also have a lot of great relationships with local physical therapy places and um, all sorts of different um, places around Burlington, as well as local well high schools. Um, they have shout out our trainers there are able to work with the students. Good question. Let's see, what's this next one? Oh, okay. So the question is, how did you know that UVM was the right, was the right college for you? I would say, you know, I had never really heard of UVM when I was going to high school. I thought I wanted to go, you know, down south to schools in Virginia, North Carolina. Um, I thought I wanted a small school, but I visited UVM because a friend of mine from high school told me I should check it out. Um, so I came up one day and just wandered around campus. I took the campus tour, but really when I was walking around campus and seeing the way that the students interacted with each other, how that everyone seemed so friendly. Um, and how there was just so much to do there. Um, with it being its size, there's a lot of ways to get involved, but there's also a lot of different um, just ways to get a community as well. So not only is there so much to do, but there's just, you feel like you belong here as well because people know who you are at UVM. How about you? What made you realize? Um, well, I came back in February um, and it was pretty cold. And where I live at home, um, we don't ever have any snow. So I actually really enjoyed be having um, a nice change in temperature and having a real winter. Um, and just the people here, everyone made me feel so welcome. 
Um, I met with a couple students when I was here. I got to attend some classes, and the professors were like really excited to have me there. I got to go to some engineering classes actually. Um, so it was really cool to learn about something I didn't really know about. I went to one a calculus class as well, and I was taking calculus at the time in high school. Um, and we they were actually doing the same thing as me, and I just realized um, the way that that professor was explaining it made a lot of my class at home make a lot more sense as well. So it just kind of really connected with me, the people that were here and how eager they were and to tell me all about UVM and let me know like why they loved it here. And then the integration of the of the campus into the community. Yeah, that's um, definitely. I love being able to go out into the community. I work at two elementary schools or volunteer at two elementary schools here. Um, and I love having like little kids. It's a nice way to not be surrounded by college students for a little bit um, and to like focus on something a little bit different than school. and. Um, just be able to go out and talk to people um, who aren't in school at the moment. So, yeah. Um, also, UVM offers you a lot of different things that you can try out. Like um, my one roommate came from Florida, never had seen snow before, and uh, got really involved with skiing when he got here. So he rented skis his first year and went out with a few friends of ours and learned how to do it. Um, and now, uh, just this morning, he went skiing up at Jay Peak. Uh, and was able to go out there for the day. So there's lots of ways to try out things that you've never done before. So I have a question about um, fitting in as an out-of-state student. Um, so most students here, I feel, are actually out-of-state. Um, I'm not sure what the ratio is. It's here. about 60 to 70 percent of students are out-of-state. So there's a lot of out-of-state students at the University of Vermont. So usually there's just so many out-of-state students. Like if I've had roommates from Missouri, from Florida, um, and California, just to name a few of the far ones. Um, there's not really a ton of, there's, I mean, there's obviously a fair amount of Vermonters who go here, but it's not uncommon to run into more than not, just because there's so many out-of-state students here. Um, we have uh, um, students here from all of the 50 states, um, a fair amount from the Northeast, but then a bunch out West like Colorado, Oregon, um, Washington. Uh, actually, I don't know if you remember, one of the guys on the track team was from Hawaii. Really nice yeah. guy, Matt Feely. Yep, he came all the way back here. Um, but he really liked UVM. And I found um, there's surprisingly more people from California than I expected there to be. I really came here to try to like meet all new people. And I have met all new people. But it's always surprising to hear someone, oh, I'm from the Bay Area. I'm like, oh, that's funny, because that's kind of where I'm from. Um, but it is really nice being able to meet so many other people who aren't just from the West Coast or from the East Coast, but are from everywhere in between. Because everyone kind of has something different to bring. Um, so I learned about new habits, like the word wicked. Um, that was not in my vocabulary until I came here. Um, so it's really funny just to hear other people talk sometimes and talk about their home and then be able to look at how different it is and then how different UV or Vermont is from that as well. And I just both ended up here. Also, there's a fair amount of um international students as well. One of my best friends my first year was from Australia. Um, he was from Perth and was a great guy. Um, so we got to hang out. And we had breakfast together every Saturday and always chatted and he told me about Australia and I told him about America. Um, also, uh, there's a few uh, Chinese students that I'm really good friends with, a good German student who I'm friends with. So you end up meeting people from all over the world, not just the United States. Yeah, there's a lot of Scandinavian people I've met here. One of my really good friends is um, from Sweden. So I get to hear all about that. Um, and she, she's like, oh, we're about the same distance from here. Um, but it's nice to see that she like just she loves coming back to school. She's always so excited um, when summer is about to end and we're about to get started again with school um, just because she loves coming back to Vermont. So a great question was asked recently just about um, professors, um, also lecture style classes, um, and would you be stuck with graduate assistants? The answer is no. Um, actually, only 2% of classes are taught by graduate assistants. The other 98% are taught by faculty members. Um, I've never had a class that has been taught by a graduate assistant before. Um, also, a lecture style class at UVM is different than at other schools. We consider a lecture style classroom, you know, 50 students to about like 140 students. Our largest lecture classroom seats 225 students, um, but there's only about five classes that are taught that are of that size. And a lot of times those, those lecture style classrooms will break down into lab components. So when I was taking a chemistry course, even though we had a lecture of about 100 students, when it came time to do in our labs, we were in groups of 20 to 30 with the same professor um, and they're with us. So that was a great experience to have that uh, 
close time with the professor. Also, a trick I learned is if you sit close to the front row, your class is only as big as it, you make it. So if I sit in the front row, it's just me and the professor. And um, But if you sit in the back, it's a little bit bigger, you know? I agree with Dennis. I'm in an anatomy lecture right now. There's about 200 students, but I sit in the front row, and I have no clue how many people are there. I usually take the professor commenting on how many people are out skiing that day. Um, for me, it even look back. Uh, so that's really nice. Also, our faculty have office hours um, where you get to go and chat with them. So I made it a point as a first year student to stop by all of my professors' office hours and just get to know them and get to learn about what made them want to teach the subjects that they were and everything like that. Um, and I still have those strong relationships with faculty members, so I might have not seen one in like a year or two since I've been taking classes all over the place, and they still remember my name and still ask me, hey, are you still up to that, or how's everything going, and you can ha have those conversations with them. Yeah, all my professors are really good, because I always sit in the front, even if it is a larger class, I've gotten to know almost all my professors really well um, from that and from going to office hours. So um, my anatomy class has a different professor for different subjects. So we have like one professor who teaches the reproductive system and another professor teach pretty much everything else. Um, but they both were very welcoming um, whenever I came to office hours to ask questions. That's a good question. Any other ones that we have popping up? Let's see. Those are highway at your UVM. Um, oh gosh. There's so many. Yeah. I would say, you know, the fact that you can, that UVM is big enough to offer so much, but also a, a good size that you can actually accomplish so much. Um, I Just the sort of internships that we've been able to experience um, at UVM, because we are sort of the largest institution in the state, has been great. Um, it was awesome to be able to work in the state house with the lieutenant governor, who's pretty much the second in command of the state. And I was his number. I was his only intern, so having that opportunity was huge. Uh, but also doing cool things uh, with my friends. I remember my first year, I went um, on this one great hiking trip where we went out, and there was five feet of snow, and we climbed to the top of this mountain and dug these five foot holes, and we're burning logs in there to just stay warm all night, and we cooked uh, pork out there and everything, and it was just awesome uh, as a first year student to go on some adventure like that where we were able to just off by ourselves in the woods is surviving it and everything so that things like that really are highlights where you have those sort of experiences that are sort of unique to vermont yeah i um a lot of my experiences have been like with nursing and with my team um i was able to shadow in the hospital um and i got to see a lot of things and like actually experience like what i'd be doing once i graduate and it was really nice i actually do that my um freshman year so, or my first year here, so I was really able to know, oh, maybe I really do want to be a nurse, um, maybe I shouldn't become an anthropology major or something else just because one class was really hard, because um, I really enjoyed like seeing what I would be doing like, once I graduate. Um, so they, it's really nice that they get you that hands-on experience. I know the College of um, Education and Social Services is good about that as well. They're, you're in a classroom by your second semester, your sophomore year, um, so it is really nice to know what you're doing before you get too far into your major because maybe that's not what you really want to do because um, a lot of people come in and don't know. So it's nice to have those experiences. So um, if I was going to think back to what some of my first year experiences were, um, your first year experience starts as soon as orientation begins. So uh, orientation is in June. It's a great time to come to campus because a lot of the folks you meet are going to be um, the students in your same major. So it's great to get to know them before you all come. Also, if you meet someone during orientation that you really click with, you can request them as your roommate um, and choose them as well. Also, if there's a program housing like the Dewey House of Civic Engagement or the Greenhouse or something like that that you want to live in, you can apply to live into that. Um, also, after that, when you come to UVM, first year students get there about three days before the other students. They come on Friday, the other students can come on Sunday, so I guess two days before. And the resident advisor has all different floor activities for you to do um, to take you around and show you Burlington, show you what the school has to offer. Do you want to talk a little bit about Trek or the Week of Welcome or anything like that? Yeah, so Trek is a program. I know my roommate went on it. She was so excited because she got to get to school early. Um, so she got to pick her side of the room first. But it was a great program. She really enjoyed going on it. Um, they went, she did a, I think, a hiking one. And so she went hiking. Um, somewhere in the Adirondack Mountains, and they 
camped out and got to cook their food over a fire and went backpacking and it was so so awesome. I was quite jealous I didn't go on one. Um, but it was really a great experience for her. And then we have a whole week of welcome once you're um, at school. So that starts as soon as first years move in on that Friday. I mean, it goes all the way until the next Sunday. So um, some of the things that they have during that are they um, they have buses that you can take out to Jay Peak Water Park. So you can go out there and meet a bunch of people there. Um, they also have a boat cruise on Lake Champlain, a couple of hiking trips that students can sign up for, um, as well as things called, they have a really fun thing called the Campus Hop, where there's different activities at each one of our little four campuses, so you can move around. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And then uh, towards the end of that week of welcome, they have a big concert called Fall Fest, where we've had people like Mac Miller, White Panda, Wiz Khalifa, ASAP Rocky, just to name a few. And that's a really fun way to, like, take all your new friends and head on down to that. Um, and also one thing that they do is an activity fair at the beginning of each uh, semester. So that's where all 170 clubs put out uh, tents and everything like that. And you can go and sign up for the different clubs. I always say sign up for ones that you have no idea that you'd want to try out. See if it's something you like. Um, I know a friend of mine tried out the Salsa and Swing Society and he's been an avid dancer ever since. Um, and he, that was something he had never tried before. So there's tons of different things. Um, and then as your first year moves on, we have Spring Fest coming up where it's a huge concert outside on our green um, to sort of celebrate the winter fall. So that's a really great thing as well. Yeah, I really enjoyed the activity fair. I got to see what else was going on around campus and um, what else I wanted to get involved in. Um, so there, all the clubs are out there recruiting you to join them. Um, so I went on a hike and had like a, a Vermonster uh, down on Ben and Jerry, so that's where they have like 20 something scoops of yeah, ice cream in a bucket. Um, so I shared that with a lot of friends, um, and I actually am still friends with a bunch of people I went on that hike with um, and uh, ate the Vermonster with. So that was one of my first weekends here at UVM, and I absolutely will never forget that weekend. We got to see the sunset. We hiked up one of the ski resort mountains. So that was a really fun um, experience, and I just still know people in that um, group. So it was a good way to get to know people. Nothing like the navigator's hike up both. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think I did that one as well. Um, so I guess in sort of a way to wrap up is if I was going to give first year students just advice in general, um, definitely sign up, definitely come out, um, visit the campus if you hadn't. We've had some admitted students visiting days where you can come and check out the colleges and universities. But I think that's where you get a real feel for whether the university is for you. And then once you come, be open to experiences and trying new things and just meet as many people as you can. Um, because if you're friendly and you're outgoing and you get to know people, it's just amazing the different opportunities that will open up. Burlington is sort of a wealth of opportunities where there's so much to do and so much to learn that um, just making a ton of friends who will show you those types of things is huge. Yeah, I think joining a club or 